that her generation grew up with the mindset of do as the Romans do, right? And so it wasn't that she wasn't proud to be Samoan. It was like a survival, you know? It was just her and my dad, and she didn't have other islanders around her. So, you know, you just kind of did as the Romans do, but she was she's very proud to be Samoan. Join us as we explore the hidden histories of Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander people. Together, we hope to provide healing and strengthen cultural pride. This is Roots Reclaimed. Aloha and welcome. My name is Dr. Lester Papa, and I'll be your host for today's episode. In today's episode, we talk with Ainsley Broom, who is of Samoan descent, about her experience with rediscovering her cultural roots while living far away from her heritage. All right, aloha and welcome to the Roots Reclaimed podcast, the official podcast of the Ohana Center of Excellence. I have a special guest who is going to be talking a little bit about roots. <laughs> I'm so pleased to be able to welcome Ainsley Broom to the studio. Hello. Hello. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Uh, so glad that you are here. Now, um, why don't you tell everyone a little bit about um, about yourself and sure. uh, also about Sipping Coco. I think that's going to be some oh. really great context. And so, yeah, yeah, why don't we just start there? My name is Ainsley Broom. I grew up in Arkansas. I now live in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, I, my background is my mom is from the island of Samoa. And my dad, who is Balangi, or uh, Caucasian, uh, he actually grew up, he was born in the States, but grew up in New Zealand. So my mom uh, moved from Samoa to New Zealand, where uh, she met my dad, they got married. And my dad had done university in Texas. So after they got married, they moved to Texas. Uh, even though, like, many islanders uh, are known to be part of, like, the Catholic Church or the Mormon Church... We actually grew up Church of Christ, um, so just Christian, just a basic Christianity, essentially. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so my dad went to ACU out in Abilene, uh, and that's where they were for a few years before moving to Kansas, um, where he was pursuing a doctorate in library, uh, library science, and um, that's where me and my sister were born. And then we moved from Ar- uh, from Kansas to Arkansas. So I say we are true Arkansans. Um, because of that, uh, I have a dad who loves dad jokes. I lived in Arkansas till I was about 27, I think it was. And then moved to Nashville about five years ago. Like it's been literally five years this month. So yeah, been out here. And then, um, when I moved out here, I was lucky enough to have worked with people who were very diverse in their background, um, at my previous job before moving here, sorry, for moving to Nashville. Um, and they were the ones, I always credit them as being the ones to encourage me to dive more into my cultural heritage on my Samoan side. Um, simply because I grew up pretty, pretty Balangi, pretty white, (laughs) (laughs) white dominated, uh, town. Yeah. And so they're the ones that kind of prompted me. And so I started diving more and more into my heritage and learning more about it because my mom, like some of that, her generation grew up with the mindset of do as the Romans do. Right. And so, it wasn't that she wasn't proud to be Samoan. It was like a survival, you know, it was just her and my dad and she didn't have other Islanders around her. So, you know, you just kind of did as the Romans do, but she was, she's very proud to be Samoan, extremely proud of her culture. Um, but I feel like with her generation, it's very much like our generation yeah, helping them feel proud. And so like, that was part of what I felt the ancestors pulling me to do when I moved to Nashville, I had three weeks um, <laughs> while, while I was waiting to start my new job that I'm at now. And so I was like going back and forth on this idea of starting a blog where like I could connect with others mm-hmm. and also learn um, as myself, like can, like learn. I just needed to figure out because like in Arkansas and Tennessee, you're not going to have a library of like books or anything to really help you connect to Pacific Islander history and even online it's pretty it was pretty sparse back then I mean it's kind of sparse now but it's getting much better and thanks to social media and in part I feel like to COVID we've all connected online way better um, than we have before by the fall of 2019 I had started Sipping Coco uh, which was um, my way to, to connect with community 
to also learn from others, maybe help people who are like me, who grew up in a dominant, like a pretty dominant white town yeah. to also learn about their culture. And like, you know, I remember going to, in 2017, going to Australia and my cousins being like, oh, you're plastic Samoan, aren't you? And I was like, oh. wait, what's that? What's that? What's that? I don't know. I don't know what, I don't know what that means. And they're like, you know, fake Samoan. You can't speak Samoan. And I go, okay, Ooh, like, okay. Oh, let's like not use that. And so like, oh, yeah, right. part of my page is pretty much to just be like, we need to stop using that vocabulary. Um, need to stop shaming people in the diaspora who don't have the opportunity, who didn't have the opportunity to, to learn it. Um, because of systematic racism, because like, yes. that's the big issue there, you know? So I started sipping cocoa and was very anonymous from the very, like in the beginning. Cause I was scared. I was nervous. I was like, I don't want to be judged for having opinions. And finally was like, Oh, Hey, this is me. Um, I'm a, I'm a biracial girly out here <laughs> in the South trying to connect to our Islander roots. And I hope other people understand and, um, if you're the same like me, like let's journey together. Well, and this is why, like, right, like your story is a perfect one to be able to capture um, for Roots Reclaim because the, that's the story is this reclamation, mm-hmm. right? Of yeah. right, your Islander side and not just the process of reclaiming, but then also like having to advocate for the right to, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> this is like the right yourself. to exist. Like it, cause now I do a lot of Bridgerton content and people come to my page, they're going to be like, wait, what's this? Oh uh, yeah, 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 but, yeah. But, but I do... But Bridgerton is where I feel like a lot of us who are biracial and feel very in between are allowed to exist because I was either Uh too brown for my white friends or I'm too white for my brown family. And so with, you know, the world of Bridgerton, where it's a diverse world, where my, my literally, because I did DNA test, I have UK roots. So where my Scottish heritage in a way can exist and where my Samoan heritage can exist in a world where I don't have to choose a side. I can just be Ainsley. (laughs) Oh, I love that. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. And so, you know, one of the things that I want to be able to add to the conversation is some of the history. And so like I had been doing some very light research. But yeah, in terms of the research that I um, had taken a look at, I was like, how how is it that we get Pacific Islanders into the southern United States? How do we go from <laughs> South Pacific to South U.S., right? Exactly, yeah. Um, and so here's what I found. was looking, and there, you know, the, the kind of light overview of this is that um, there are a lot of agreements that are happening in the Pacific um, mm-hmm. uh, in terms of... Uh, folks from the islands being able to come to the U.S. specifically without a visa, and that there's like a free mm. association then, right, um, between um, Pacifica Islands and coming to the U.S. Um, some of the waves of immigration had been labor. So like in Hawaii, for mm-hmm. example, a lot of it had been, you know, sugarcane plantation. Another way of um, immigration for Pacifica folks had then been through school. And so... Mm-hmm. Um, it's been um, kind of the precursor for um, having Polynesian, specifically men, be in um, football arenas also. Right? Yeah. Had yeah, been oh, through yeah. education and then through um, the NFL when, uh, to go pro. And then other uh, labor departments that had kind of um, opened up had uh, been kind of notable by industry, specifically mm-hmm. meat packing, specifically Tyson Farms, specifically from the Marshall Islands. Tyson's in Arkansas. Exactly. <laughs> and yeah. so that was one of the things that had come up in the research has been kind of mm-hmm. an influence source for why the southern U.S. Yeah, yeah. It, it's been interesting because I, I had wondered the same thing, and it's been hard to sometimes find it. But I know especially yeah. for like the Marshall Islands, the Marshallese, it was in the 80s that a lot of them immigrated to Arkansas because right. of Sam's and things like that because of the Walt- Sam Walton, uh, Walmart. Uh, so <laughs> yes. It's, it was interesting to see that. And then like even now there's been like a huge immigration to like Texas. Yes. Like because of sports, like you mentioned, because of football and things like that. Um, I think it's the Trinity School in Dallas or Houston, I don't know. Um, but they have a huge like Islander community to where like, you know, normally like growing up or like even as I got older and was in college, you would see like the haka being performed at football games. Yes. For 
like in California and Utah, that side of the states. But now it's happening in Texas of right. all places. And to me, I'm just like, holy cow, like that is incredible. And that's so cool to see. And so I, like, I get really excited about it because like, I call them like our tiny islands here, like in the Southern United States and the Midwest. Um, I don't know if, I don't know if you call it, consider Missouri Midwest, but um, <laughs> I don't really know. Missouri and Arkansas, I'm always like, are we in the middle or are we Southern? I don't know. You know, Missouri, we always, growing up, we went up there um, for flag days. And mm -hmm. um, when I was 16, that's when we started to go up there and celebrate like a lot of Samoan uh, heritage days and things like that. And so it's been really cool to, um, I don't know, see like what I call tiny islands pop up in states where I grew up, around states I grew up, because I always knew I was Samoan, but I didn't know what that yeah. meant. Like, I right. didn't know what that meant. I was like, right. oh. And, it, you know, I think I can totally relate to that. Like, you got, you don't know what it means to you unless you're asked, right? Yeah. <laughs> unless you're forced to um, yeah. kind of figure it out, you know? My, my parents are from the Philippines, but I was born and mm -hmm. raised in Hawaii. Right. Yeah. Uh, and so when I was growing up, like even the shirt that I'm wearing right now is like from the islands, you know, yeah. and right. It's something that I've been used to. Like I have been doing hula as part of like the public school system since mm -hmm. I was in kindergarten. Um, uh, you know, if you are from Hawaii, you know, May Day. Shout out to you all. Um, if you Coming know up. what May Day is. Yes, exactly. Uh, and so. It's a, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. And um, for me growing up then, right, like I knew what like being native Hawaiian, being Kanaka Maoli, mm -hmm. like there's this culture, right, that is the indigenous culture, then I have my own, right? right. Like there is the culture of the land that I live on. There's the culture of where my parents came from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, no, it is true. Right. And like, that was like the way to be able to navigate that. And then I, I didn't really know though, like that I had to justify or explain that until I moved to the continental U S and mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. And also like, have you visited the Philippines? since? Yes, I have. Yeah. Okay. So something that I experienced is like, cause I went when I was five to like New Zealand and Samoa. And right. like when you're five, it doesn't really, you're like, Oh, this is so fun. The beach. And right. Like, right. Yeah, yeah. I know the world. I'm on an airplane. <laughs> Uh, you know, and it's like, mom, can I get off this 14 hour flight? And mom's like, go to sleep. Um, so, right. uh, so like for me, when I went back in 2018 and then 2019, cause I only went to Australia. So I got the feeling of like family and like my soul was like alive, but it wasn't until I put my feet down in New Zealand and Samoa that I like. I was like, oh, wow, this is, this is where I belong. This is right. like where my people are at. And, you know, like New Zealand in 20, 2018, I went for my cousin's wedding and I was only there for five days. Yeah. And I like still remember being like, I don't want to go home. I don't want to go home. This is home. This is where I'm supposed to be. Right. And my mom literally, when I landed in San Francisco, she goes, oh, thank God. I didn't know if you were going to get on the plane. I was, like, I was so glad to hear that you are like, because I was like, I was calling her. I was like, no, I don't want to come home. I want to stay here. And yes. she was like, oh, my God. Thank God you're here. Because <laughs> she was like, I didn't. She was like worried for like fourteen hours that my she was like my daughter's gonna stay there. I might have to go to New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I just remember like it was such an intense like trip that I even went back to my office and my my coworkers were like, "You got a slight accent," and I don't like I don't know how I don't know why, but it's almost as if like our soul just like automatically knows that like you're on the right journey when you land your feet into like, you know, your ancestors country. And like, yes. it just like everything about you just like comes to life. Like, it's almost like you didn't know the person you were supposed to be until you're there. Yes. Um, and no, totally a hundred percent relatable. Um, yeah. Cause I just went to the Philippines mm -hmm. um, last summer. Um, oh. So I guess it's, it's been, it's almost a year now, but like, um, but still, yeah. I saw that like, feeling exactly and the, i think the feeling because like you said it becomes something that you appreciate more that you kind of treasure more when you're older mm -hmm. and you can understand what it means that your ancestors right yeah for a very long time up in these islands right um <laughs> have been doing yeah. the thing and i don't know about you but like there, there's something that i really admired also like 
Uh, when I went to the Philippines, it's June. All right, it is oh. capital H hot, capital yeah. H humid, and not just hot. I was gonna say humid. The humidity. Exactly, exactly. But I was like, listen, like right, millennia. My ancestors have been able to do this without AC, right? Well, and and, and to be fair, like when it's like capital H hot with humid, capital H humid. I will admit, you got the ocean breeze. Yeah. Come to the south. Where there's no ocean. <laughs> like, I, I remember being in Samoa and I'd be like, you know what? I can't complain. I know it's hot. I know it's humid. But I would take this kind of hot and humid over any, like, July in Tennessee. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Like, and I would take that any day. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's the thing. It was right, like, <clears throat> that was what I had realized is then, you know, like, even the thing of... Uh, how you are like not in the house during the day you are outside but you have to be out and that's what like if you're going to be out of your house you might as well you know say hi to a few friends go visit Mm -hmm. the market um you know i love market yes exactly and so you know there's a whole way of life to um that kind of supports them being able to like make it through the climate right yeah Um, and so it, it's it's been I think really cool to to have that experience uh, that you have had of like then being able to like go back and reconnect. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you know one of the questions that I have for you then is um, growing up because you're doing a lot of this like you know right identity what it means to you how uh, um, and then being able to kind of like defend your right to claim it. Yeah. Um, how do you think that has affected uh, um, how you either think about yourself or um, how, I guess what I'm trying to get at is in terms of mental health, like impacts, mm. you know, um, do you feel like that process of finding out like what identity means to you, your process of like holding on and trying to claim onto something when people are telling you to your face, you don't have a right to it, you know? Yeah. I wonder if you can share a little bit more of those kinds of impacts. Yeah, so um, it's wild because, like, you know, I would say, like, growing up in the town I grew up in, they just, like, accepted it. I, I was actually pretty, like, lucky in that way to where mm. they're like, oh, you're, uh, you're, you're island or cool, whatever. Like, my friends didn't, like, care, honestly. Like, to be honest, they were just like, all right, whatever. Right. Um, I think it was really, it hit me when I was, like, actually diving into it or I was going to, like, weddings and things like that to where... I had cousins of cousins kind of being like, well, you're not this and you're not that. And then I got even more so when I was making like like Pacific Islander like content, essentially. I don't know. There would just be like random comments that people would say. And it wasn't necessarily like you don't have a right to this. It was just almost like, just shut up. You know, oh, like don't talk okay. about it. Don't rock the boat. And there was always topics that would come up, especially from – Especially, it was also around dating. Like, there's always, like, a a whole topic when it comes to, like, Islanders and, like, who we date. Mm. And it would always come up to that point. And it was not necessarily, like, you were not island enough. It was, like, almost like you're off a cussy, you wouldn't get it or something. I don't know. Oh. It was just, it was always kind of, like, just, like, it was more or less, like, you're off a cussy. You're off yes. a cussy, you're half cast, you're only half. So you're not technically enough and things like that. And so yeah. I think that always like prompted me and made me be like, okay, well I'll show y'all. I'll prove to you how much I am Pacific Island, like how Pacific Islander I am, how hard like I will ride or die. Yeah. The PIs. Um, and in doing so I created an account that was mainly about Polynesian, you know, topics and issues and things like that. But it would be like, you know, they, a lot of them, when they found out I couldn't speak the language or, like, I said I was off of Kasi, they, were, they would, I don't know, it was a little bit, it was, there was judgment there. Yeah. But I was like, oh, don't worry. I was like, I have, I was raised by a Samoan mom. Right. So, um, she told me, don't get down, get even, or Ooh. get revenge. So, um, and so I built a platform. I built it to be like, you don't Either you don't want an Islander voice or you think I'm not Islander enough and I will show you how much Islander voices are needed and I will show you how much of an Islander I am. And so, um, yeah, I don't, honestly, if you would ask me a few years ago, I probably would remember the comments, but because I've had to just like work through all of them, I kind of just forgot it and I'm almost like to the point 
on my journey where I'm like, I'm Pacific Islander and this is the way I Pacific Island. You yes. love me. <laughs> I was like, I got two Matai titles from it. My family respects me. My mom told me she was proud of me after taking our Samoan group and putting them in the Pred Stadium for API night. Oh. I was like, I don't care what you tell me. I am so proud of my heritage. And if you tell me I'm not good enough, I'm just going to tell you, go talk to the ancestors and you can just F off. Sorry. Right. So <laughs> like, to me, it's just like, why do we have to, why are we putting these colonizer, like blood quantum things around people that we don't really know? Right. Like, I get it, like, if we're going to talk, like, let's, if we're going to have a hard conversation, like, I think a conversation people aren't ready for is, like, when it comes to claiming our stories and telling them correctly, because I'm into film and all that, so it's, like, to me, it's, like, who gets the right to tell our stories the way we need to tell them respectfully? Yes. And who's, like, being Elizabeth Warren out here claiming a 16th Native American and telling our stories and really, they're just doing a colonizer's version of it. Right. That's when I'm like, okay, maybe we talk, have a, t- a chat. But other than that, I'm like, let's not blood quantum each other. That's ridiculous. And, you know, I think, again, really good message, right, for the community to be able to hear. I'm curious what your message would be mm-hmm. for... Um, you know, anybody who is like Samoan, Pacific Islander, if they're going through something, right? Yeah. Um, you know, like it, it, it is hard, like, you know, and you have had a really powerful, strong, successful um, uh, journey through that reclamation process, right? And doing as the Romans do and having that flexibility. It's tough. That's right. And so for people who, right, it is tough. And so for some people who don't quite get it, right? Like who don't mm-hmm. um, feel like they can, right? Or feel like they're not strong enough or feel like they're not enough, period, right? To be able to reclaim their thing, like reclaim their identity to, to yeah. stake claim to it. What do you think that um, needs to be, I don't know, like heard or... Um, encouraged in order to allow people, you know, to just say, hey, actually, let me do it. Like, let me go ahead and see what, like, my islanderness means to me. I say, take the journey. Give yourself grace. Oh, my God. Yes. Give yourself so much grace. You're going to make mistakes. Trust me. <laughs> go into it knowing that people are going to criticize you. Yes. People are going to criticize you no matter what. Because I can only imagine, I'm on this, I'm talking to you about this, and I'm like, I'm sure someone's going to be like, well, why isn't she wearing a flower? Why isn't she wearing an Islander out? You know, like, no matter what, you're going to get criticized, right? And so, give yourself some grace. Also understand that we are in the diaspora, and the Pacific Islanders, we're all trying to learn what being Pacific Islander means to us here. Yes. It's pretty well established in Australia and New Zealand, which is great because they're so close to the motherland. Uh huh. But for us here, we're still trying to figure it out. And we're trying to figure it out in different parts of the country, yes. which is insane, right? Because my way of doing Islander stuff is completely different than the way they do it in California. And something that a lot of Islanders are talking about, like this is so like nitpicky, but how we talk as well, like the accents we use. Oh. Because like, <laughs> Like, just being, like, because, like, I'll say something in my southern accent, and they'll be like, oh, my gosh, like, you're saying it, like, and I'm like, I am so sorry, but (laughs) do you want me to tell you how you say McDonald's or y'all? Like, do you want me to criticize you on that? Like, we got to have a conversation that the way we're still, like, we all speak, a lot of us speak English, but we're speaking English differently, and the same will happen when I, when I finally learned how to speak Samoan. It is going to be someone, it will sound probably a little bit different. It'll have a little twang to it, (laughs) but it is still our language. You know, I think something that I've learned, you know, there's that saying that I'm my ancestor's greatest dream. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's the saying, like I am my, I am my ancestor's greatest dream. And I'm like, no, you are, you're like, I've been thinking about this a lot. I've been meaning to post this, but you're your ancestor's greatest revenge because like the way colonizers, people that are criticizing you, people that are coming after you, they they want you to second guess yourself. They want you to like 
not take the like not reclaim your heritage not be proud of who you are where you came from they want you to be worried and scared and i encourage you not to be like you're your ancestors greatest revenge you are their mouthpiece now you are the person that can speak for them do it like i just say like just freaking do it mistakes will happen but surround yourself with elders that's probably one of my big find those elders in your community that you can talk to that you can literally literally sit at their feet and listen to their stories and if you have a parent like i did who was like why are you messing around with this culture stuff you know because like when our parents immigrate here it's like find a good job get a college degree and be successful it's not fine it might be fine love after you've done all that because (laughs) i have to do that right now i'm dealing with that like i got the degree i got the job I'm living in the big city, and now it's like, where's your husband? And I'm like, right. didn't tell me to do that from ages zero right. to, like, 20-something. So I don't have that skill yet, Mom. But, you know, that was our parents' like focus. But now what's the great thing is that if you have that parent that's like, you don't have to worry about that stuff, you need to focus on job, school, sports, whatever. When you finally get to reclaim it, and you, they see how excited you are about the culture. They see how proud you are. They see you getting involved or, like, connecting or doing the damn thing. You then can turn around and those chains of, like, what I've been saying, the chains of assimilation, the chains of whatever they brought with them can be broken. Yes. And then you, with them, are able to celebrate this rich heritage and culture that you share. And that's something I've been doing with my own mom is, like, she got so, like, I've been able to see a person who would have, like, Samoan, like, we would wear the Samoan clothing, or we would do our hair a certain way, or whatever the case may be, but she was never able to, like, fully, like, break herself free of that, like, bind that, like, assimilation had on her yeah. until I was older, and I was able to be like, look, mom, see, we can do it like this. Look, mom, like, let's do this, and, like, look, mom, let's, like, and, like, there were times where I was like, Ainsley, why aren't you doing, why aren't you trying to find a boyfriend? You're wasting your time with the culture. Your culture's not going to find you a boyfriend. I'm like, I'm not. Um, (laughs) (laughs) You know, and so it's just like, there's so many beautiful things that will happen when you reclaim your culture, when you claim your heritage, when you reclaim your identity, that don't let fear or whatever is holding you back from discovering the beauty that is part of reclamation. Yes, yes, yes. And if you are not ready to take the journey yet, it's fine. Find ways to mm-hmm. get ready. Like <laughs> read books. Like you can you can just read a book. Like there are so many books out there and I know that sounds boring, but if you're like me that you know, reading books is one thing, but watch the movies. Movies are such a great way. I don't can't tell you how many times I watch Samoan Wedding or um, I would then find ways to do like Vi. Or oh, uh, yeah. whale rider. Like there are so many yeah. movies out there. Even Lilo and Stitch, for goodness sake. <laughs> like, you know, like if you have to dive into Moana, do that. But I'm just saying, like, there are so many ways to like start baby steps and like feeling like you're like, okay, this is what makes me feel this way. Cause like there are days where I'm like, oh, I feel so low. I'm like not doing well mentally, I'm not doing well. Um, just like in my headspace, the best thing I've ever done is I turn on my Polynesian music. I watch one of my movies. I watch whatever. And I'm like, oh, I needed this. I needed to be back around my people. Like, I am so happy to be hit in this space. Yes, yes. I mean, like, you know, my I think my version of that is definitely like um, since coming back from the Philippines, I have like an entire uh, original Pinoy music like playlist, yes. right? <laughs> And yeah. so that that's exactly right. Like when I'm feeling low, I need like the small hit of like mm-hmm. home and community. Yep. That's it. So I will be jamming in that living room, like right, like a karaoke party of one. You know? <laughs> always, always, yes. Like you always have to have that. I mean, mine's like sometimes coming from work, like driving home from work. I'll put it on, and I don't even have it on like the Spotify DJ. And oh like, yeah, yeah, my DJ here with you. And he'll go like, you've been listening to this, da, 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 and like turns on the island music, and I was like, I didn't know I needed this, but I feel so much happier right now. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's I love always that. good, yeah. Thank you again for taking the yeah. time to be able to share with us. Um, for those of you who are listening, thank you for uh, taking time to listen to this podcast. Uh, Ainsley, if the people want to find you, 
Where do they go? Uh, I am on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. So I'm not really or X, <laughs> bad, X uh, and Threads. Those are the the main sources of places I'm at. Uh, and what is your uh, handle for the people to find you? Yeah, you can find me at Ainsley underscore Broom, or if you're looking for the blog, it's Sipping Coco. Wonderful. Yeah. All right. Well, then, yeah. Thank you again for being our podcast guest. Um, Thank you for uh, having me. This of is course. Fun. Hopefully I can uh, have you on the podcast again some other time. There's some other places that we didn't quite get to uh, explore yet. Sorry, so I talked too much. No, no, no. This is this is the point, right? Is um, I need you to talk and share because then um, there's going to be that much more people than who can uh, relate to all the things. I mean, it happened already here, so I'm hoping the <laughs> magic will happen with our listeners as well. Absolutely. Roots Reclaimed is a production of the AANHPI Ohana Center of Excellence, a culturally centered behavioral health resource center aimed to empower Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander communities. To get access to resources, referrals, trainings, workshops, and so much more, visit us at aanhpi-ohana.org. Mahalo.